Hi guys, it's design time again. I have so many designs that I never finished or I didn't even populate it. I made it because I thought I would need it. And then I forgot it because something else came that was more interesting for me. So to be honest, now I have a reason to revisit all these designs I made uh, because I want to show it to you and I hope you will like it or at least a few of them. So today it is a rather, sm it is a small design, nothing really um, fascinating, but it is something that uh, I wanted to make because as you know, I'm in the power electronics and I uh, do a lot of with switch mode power supplies and designs. And one of my favorite controller ICs is the venerable TL494. And uh, it's an old IC. I will show you a little bit more information about that in a Jiffy. But it does whatever I want. But every time I, when I made a design, I had to lay out again the same and the same part of the TL494. So I said, okay, that's it. I want to make a module that incorporates everything that has to do with the TL494 and the driver stage for the IGPDs or the, or the MOSFETs. Um, and this is what came out. This little guy came out. This is very small, guys. I don't know how to show you. Best way to show you is, again, with my trusty battery. 9 volt battery. So you see the size of it. So. Here again. There are quite many, or there are designs that you can buy from China, but I wanted one that fits my needs. So this is what came out. I will show you the design. You have the TL494 and a dedicated dual driver, IGPD. Uh, gate driver. The good thing is that you can populate this little guy quite flexible. If you can even put a TL594 uh, instead of the 494. The only difference between TL494 and 594 is that the 594 has an under, lock, under voltage lockout uh, circuitry and the voltage reference is a 1% accuracy instead of 5% of the 494. That's it. No other differences. It's a newer chip. It um, is, let's say, end of the 80s, 1988 or something like that, while the TL494 is, uh, is beginning of the 80s, 1983 or something like that. But enough blah blah. Let me show you the schematic. So this is the whole idea. Where is my pen? It's not a pen, it's something I don't know how to call it, just to show it to you. So let's start. The center of the design is a TL494, of course. Yeah. A very nice chip. I like it. It is an old chip, but a goodie. It has everything to, uh, yeah, to design a, a PVM controlled DC-DC converter. You can use it for a half bridge, full bridge, be a push pull, or even a flyback because you have it has two modes. It has a symmetric mode, dual mode, or a single mode that's controlled with that, with that pin. So everything here. So this is the TL494. 
I incorporated, I included a very flexible compensation circuit here that you can populate however necessary, depending on how this will work, the frequency and everything. Further added is a dead time, uh, dead time control because this thing has a dedicated daytime, dead time control pin. So you either can use it with a, just with a pot, the onboard pot. This one, if you want, or you can use it as a soft start circuit using these three components here, again, populated with the values you need. Or if you don't want none of them, just put a zero ohm resistor here, omit these two, and you will have maximum uh, duty cycle at the, from the beginning of the start. TL494 and 594 means that the DTC and with a zero voltage or a low means full duty cycle with a one or five volts is, uh, I think, th um, three three percent for the cycle or five percent, but very low of you. Next thing is a quite, again, adaptable and versatile uh, frequency control circuit. This is the frequent. This is the capacitor the, for the oscillator. All of the components, all the, of the SMT components, the passive ones, are 0603. The only one that is a little bit bigger is 0805. Why? Because we want to have this capacity, this capacitor, as accurate as possible. And the smaller they get with MLCC, etc., the more dependent the capacity gets uh, um, from the from, uh, depending on the, on the voltage applied on the capacitor. This is why this one should be used, or I use it, with an MKT. It's an MKT, it, it's a polyester capacitor, SMD0805. Well, of course, you can put a ceramic too, but it is an 0805. You can use MKP or MLCC. And here you have it. You can either Pot only, then use a zero ohm. The pot is this one. And this one, if you want to use a external cord to bring it in the front of some uh, front panel. Or you just use only if as a fixed frequency when you close this jumper. So this is the whole thing. Everything is broken out. Vsense, Isense, Vset, Iset. DTC, the reference is broken out. Everything on the on the on the uh, on the on the pin header. You can switch the TL between single mode or dual mode. In the single mode. You have both of the trans-output stages in yeah, the same frequency and at the same phase. In dual mode, you have the half of the frequency of the oscillator and 180 degrees out of phase. The reference is broken out. And now we have the, let me make it a little bit smaller. The driver. I'm not playing with drivers. I didn't want to start to play with uh, transistor drivers in totem pole configuration, like the whole Chinese uh, designs or the most designs you will see. This is just a dedicated driver that is built to do this job. This is this I see. For now, I'm using the IR4427S. 
It is a dual non-inverting driver, but can deliver up to two times 1.2 amps. That's more enough than all my designs that I plan for. But you can use another pin compatible driver, the MIC4424 for micro. That is a two times three amps. Or you use the Texas Instruments UCC27324, that is two times four amps. All of these are pin compatible. You will ask perhaps, then why you use this one? You won't really know. Look, this is why. Because I have two and a half thousand of those. This is a reel that was left, left over from a larger project I had a few years ago. I made a few years ago. So I have two and a half thousand pieces of that. Perhaps now you understand why I'm using that. And of course, because it is enough for my needs. Further, I incorporated a little bit of filtering from the raw voltage that goes directly, uh, for, for, sorry, from the raw voltage that goes directly to the, to the driver stage. A little bit filtering that goes here to the TL494, just for fun. And to have a cleaner voltage. This is the one, what, what do I use here? 100 micro Henry inductor. Everything is, as you see, wing wing, uh, SMD. You can populate it however you want it, however you need it. The power ray, the power tracks are without a lacquer, so you can en enhance them as I did here with more uh, solder. Make them thicker, same here. And the only uh, through hole parts are the capacitors, the two 100 microfarad capacitors, and the pots and the connector. Why the capacitors? Because, yeah, I don't know, honestly. I didn't have any SMD in that size, so I used this one. They are small enough. Tantal would be much too large and this go in height and not in width. This is why I used it. Yeah, this is more or less the design. Just a few informations here of the TL494. It's an old chip, 1983, I think. I, somewhere I read it, I don't know where. Yeah, that's that's already revised. You can see here. No, let's do it like that. You can see what you can see here. You can see here the internals of the chip, two air amplifiers. You can use one for the voltage and one for the current if you want. Five volt reference, dead time control, the oscillator part, and the dual part or single depending on how you set this pin. We can do everything with that. I like it. The only thing that is not correct here, we say 500 milliamps. These were perhaps the Motorola or the on uh, chips, but the Texas instruments are for 200 milliamps per side. And this is the driver chip I use. And no thrills, no bells, no whistles. Here it says, why does it say here 1.5 amps? Yeah, probably because it is 1.5 amps and I just went to on, the, on, the, on the secure side and use it only up to 1.2 amps, that's it. This is what it is on on, on the board at the moment, but can these three can be interchanged, are pin compatible. Yeah, what else do we have? 
Okay, now let me show you a little bit how this thing works. A small demo. So, before we start the demo, guys, what, I, what it comes now, please subscribe my channel if you like what you see, if you like my content, if you like this designs what I'm making, and there are a lot of them that will come in the future. So this is a reason why I did it, because my plans, a few of my plans is, for example, to use these high-frequency, high-power ferrite transformers for a, to make a high-voltage power supply that goes up to 800 volts with doubling, or three or four or 400 volts without a doubler, up to 500, 600 watts, DC, DC from 12 volts. This is why I want to use this one. It takes much less space because it's vertical and I don't have to all the time, every time do the same design just for the controller chip. So, okay, now we started it. Let me show you how oh, it works. Now I have to take that out from my phone. Here you have it again. It is powered. Yeah. It's not very professional, the setup, what I made, but it works for what I want to show you. And I'm not going to do a PCB just for that. Yeah? I have connected a scope with the two output channels, A and B. And here you have it. And now this will be quite difficult to show you without moving too much. It is set to 15 kilohertz because it is already for my next project uh, and another high voltage power supply that will go up to 50 kilovolts, one to one and a half milliamps. And we use this module. Yeah, you can change the frequency. I'm using the pot here. Let me do that, this pot. Let's go again to 15 kilohertz. It is so difficult with only two hands. Okay, more or less. And the other pot here, for example, just for the test, to test the whole system, this one, is for the dead time control. And then I'm for, lost it here. And here you will see how it works with the dead time control. At the end it is it changes the pulse width, but I'm on the wrong one moment. Difficult, but I try I will try it again. See, oh, it changes. Anyway, you see, it is. You can just with this the small test jig that I made here. It is just to show you that how the frequency is to be controlled and the dead time. So nice square at the output. These things here is because of my grabby oscilloscope. It is an old oscilloscope. I need a new one, and I have to buy a new one. This is really crap. It helped me in the last past years, made a good job, but now it's way out of, out of date. And it seems that the input section is meh, and the second channel is meh, something. But I'm not, I will not play with that. I will buy a new one. Anyway, this is the design for today. It's the next planned designs for this module are a 50 kilovolt high voltage power supply that can deliver up to 50 watt and power supply that uses these transformers here that will be 400 volts at 500 watts or four or 800 volts with a doubler again 500 watts. So. 
if you like what you see guys please subscribe my channel if you like my content press the like button press the notification button to get information to get informed when i have a new video that is for today so thank you for watching see you guys bye